Hello everyone, you are joining us for the Time to Football podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to preview the conference title games, the NFC Championship and the AFC Championship. We're going to give you our picks for each game, as well as talk about who you believe are going to win based off of polls that we took on social media. We're also going to take some time to answer some questions that you fans have submitted, as well as talk about why the New Orleans Saints this year are much different than previous seasons. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to the Town of Football Podcast. What was up with Adam Gase's eyes? Can we talk about that for a second? If you didn't watch the press conference where the New York Jets introduced Adam Gase as their new head coach, I highly recommend that you look it up because he resembled Vladimir Putin. It was actually to that point. Now, face-wise, hair-wise, he may resemble Putin, but this is more about, um, is it Putin or Putin? Shows you how educated I am. He may resemble him, but it was more so about the death stare that he gave throughout the whole press conference. It's about that gaze. Adam Gaze. Looking off to the side. Did not, you know, I actually counted the the uh, whole two and a half minutes that he was on uh, the podium. He was at the podium and he spoke for two and a half minutes before he sat down and started answering questions from the media, which believe me, he actually had that whole gaze throughout the whole entire press conference. But just considering the podium, two and a half minutes, he blinked five times within that span. Now, you may think to yourself, Hassan, that's not bad. What is that? One blink every 30 seconds? It's not. But if you consider how wide open his eyes were, how 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 far apart his top eyelids were from his bottom eyelids, the amount of space that he was allowing the surface of his eyeballs to, to reach carbon dioxide and oxygen, that mixture... You would have to think to yourself, you've got to blink more than five times in, in a span of two and a half minutes. But it was crazy. There was one point where like even he he made a joke about like FaceTiming or something like that. And he looked off to the side, did not blink, and he made some face that was like like he was trying to laugh or trying to hide a laugh, but he just Now if you're watching this podcast up on YouTube, um let's put up a, a side by side graphic of, of my face making that and, and Adam Gay. So it was like I don't know how closely I'm resembling it right now. But if you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, just know that we have a podcast up on YouTube that you go uh, search for Time to Football up on there. and You can subscribe on there. I didn't even introduce myself. My name is Hassan Khan. I am the host of this fabulous show, Time to Football. My apologies. Where are my manners? Speaking of manners, how about Trump? Gosh, man. So, so, much, so many great things happened on Monday. Adam Gase, Trump serving fast food to Clemson football for winning their championship. Now, Trump is an avid fast food lover. If you don't know that, he, he talks about it all the time. He eats it all the time. And he this government shutdown prevented him from serving all these five-course meals that the Clemson football uh, players and coaching staff uh, expected to get. Instead, Trump actually got fast food, Wendy's, McDonald's, pizza, he got Domino's, Big Macs, Flayo Fishes, just Dave single with cheeses. I don't, you know, it, it was just a lot of things. There was also <laughs> in the pictures there was actually uh, pictures of salads, like from fast food restaurants. So I guess that's kind of healthy. I don't know. Um, my voice kind of cracked right there because that shows how much confidence I have in how healthy those salads are. Uh, but that was interesting how that happened, dude. Like, okay, I'm a guy. My rule with food is quantity over quality all the time. Quantity over quality. Like, give me a lot of food. I don't care how... I, I guess I do care about kind of sort of being healthy. But, like, I don't care about the taste. Like, I'd rather have a lot of food and get more bang for my buck. But this is free food from the President of the United States. They all dressed up. The Clemson football players did expected steaks and lobsters and all that kind of sort of stuff. They actually said like when they were, <laughs> yo, dog, 
when they added Big Macs in their original boxes to their tiny paper plates, they were like, man, I thought this was going to be a joke. So with me being quantity over quality, you know, I would smash that food. I totally would. But, you know, with it being the White House, I guess I kind of expected it to be a little bit uh, more fancier food. And I guess Trump expected or, or thought legitimately that this was going to be a good idea or that this was going to be funny. But and, and thought that big boys were going to love that food. But just imagine being a football team with a team of nutritionalists and trainers that tell you how to eat all season long you probably don't even crave junk food at that point and being forced to eat that man that was great stuff man good times can't get more american than that fast food though so i do have to applaud him on that anyways besides my tangents that i just went on um we are going to talk about the conference title games that are going on in the NFC and the AFC. The Rams versus the Saints in the NFC and the uh, Patriots versus the Chiefs in the AFC. But before we do that, we have to go to our segment on the show that we have every single week. And it is called Mind Blowing Facts. Wow. Yes, indeed. That was Owen Wilson given his infamous Wow sound effects um because what happens with this segment is that we read off mind-blowing facts that pertain to either the uh upcoming games or the games from last week we make it relevant to the weeks that are happening right now so we're gonna go ahead and read off five facts and every time after we read off a fact you're gonna hear the sound wow just because it's mind-blowing so let's read off fact number one with his win last week, Tom Brady has more postseason wins than Peyton Manning has postseason appearances. Wow. Believe that. Tom Brady has 28 postseason wins. Peyton Manning has 27 postseason appearances. So Brady has more wins than any other quarterback has appearances. Shows why he's one of the greatest of all time. Fact number two. Brady's weakness in the playoffs has been on the road. He only has three road playoff wins. Mark Sanchez, on the other hand, has four road playoff wins. Wow. Believe that or not, Sanchez has more road playoff wins than Brady. And the record for the most playoff wins by a quarterback on the road? Joe Flacco. Seven road playoff wins in his career. Fact number three, we're still going to be talking about the Patriots. In the game against the Chargers, James White tied the postseason record for most receptions in a single game with 15. Wow. James White also had zero carries on the day, on the ground, but 15 receptions. He actually tied uh, Darren Sproles' record when Sproles had 15 receptions in the game against uh, the San Francisco 49ers in 2011. Fact number four. Last week, Sean McVay's victory over the Cowboys made him the youngest head coach to win a playoff game in NFL history. He beat John Madden's uh, record. John Madden was 33 when he won with the Raiders. And McVay was 32. He's he's about to turn 33 in about a couple weeks, I I believe. And the last fact for the day, Michael Thomas had another big day for the Saints last week. In the playoffs, Michael Thomas averages 9 receptions, 129 yards, and 1 touchdown a game. Wow. That's the kind of wide receiver you want. So those were mind-blowing facts. So now we're going to preview the NFC Championship, the Rams and the Saints, and the AFC Championship, the Patriots and the Chiefs. The number one and the number two seeds, respectively. As a matter of fact, for the last six years, six years in a row, it's always been the number one seed versus the number two seed in the respective conference title games. So both teams that ended up having a bye Um, and their conference ended up facing in the championship game. So first off, we're going to start off with the Rams versus Saints. This is a rematch of their game earlier in week nine this season where the Saints came back and they won 45-35. Great matchup happened in the Superdome, and this will again happen in the Superdome as well. The Rams last week looked phenomenal at home. 
CJ Anderson has been a bright spot for them. Along with Todd Gurley, the first 100-yard rushers in the playoffs in a single game since 1999, um, since the Broncos did it. And over on the Saints, looked phenomenal as well. Beating the Eagles, they were down 14 to nothing in the first quarter, but the defense stepped up, allowing zero points for the rest of the way. And the Saints came back and won 20 to 14. This will be a great matchup. I'm excited about it. As far as our picks here on Time to Football, you know, I really love the Rams and I really love the Saints, and I would be happy either way. I'm just watching this game as a football fan, just enjoying it, and I feel like both teams are, are going to do really well. However, I'm going to have to give the edge to the Saints. The Saints, they're just on a different level, and we're going to talk about why a little bit later on in the podcast. The last few weeks of the regular season and last week proved that this defense is much more capable to holding up on their own. What do you guys believe? We're, we we took polls on Instagram of you guys voting for each game and who you, got, who you guys believe are going to win each game. So let's go ahead and uh, bring up those polls and see what you guys think. So you guys as well believe that the Saints are going to beat the Los Angeles Rams. 41% are favoring the Rams as opposed to 59%. The majority are favoring the Saints. So uh, it's a little bit close in in the voting. So it could go either way, uh, which I believe it will, but we'll see. But both of us agree that the Saints, or or we're picking the Saints to win this game. The next game we got is an AFC championship. The Patriots versus Chiefs. Tom Brady and, and, and the Patriots in their eighth straight AFC Championship game. Think about that. That's history being made right there. Tom Brady has a chance to go to his ninth Super Bowl. Has a chance to win his sixth Super Bowl. And last week against the Chargers, coming off that bye week, they looked phenomenal. Watching them just dismantle the Chargers on every side of the ball. Offensively, defensively, this team I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they go on and they win the Super Bowl in Atlanta. As for the Chiefs, they looked great as well. In Arrowhead Stadium, in the cold, in the snow, against the red-hot Indianapolis Colts. The Chiefs defensively, for as much flack have they been getting all season long, showed up last week. And let's see if they can keep that trend going. Because we already know what their offense can do. And outside looking in, if you look at this matchup on paper... They, it, it's going to be an offensive battle, but don't, like the Saints, don't undermine the Chiefs' defense. And that's why I'm picking the Chiefs to win. Not so much because I have faith in the Chiefs' offense, because I do, but I believe that this Chiefs' defense at Arrowhead Stadium against Tom Brady, who only has three road playoff victories in his career is going to be stopped by this Chiefs defense. So I'm picking the Chiefs to win this game. It's going to be a good matchup. Who do you guys think are going to win? So we've got the polls up, and this is actually way more uh, out of proportion than the Saints and Rams game. 69%. That's a sexy number, by the way. 69% are going with the Chiefs to win this game, and 31% are favoring the Patriots. Now, I don't know whether that's just America in general just being tired of seeing the Patriots in the Super Bowl, so they're just like, yeah, Chiefs, yeah. I'm I'm just enjoying that we we get to see history being made. That's all I'm enjoying. Just seeing Tom Brady just add on to his legacy. Already the greatest quarterback of all time, and he's just more and more each and every year adding on to the or closing the debate, I should say, on why he is the greatest quarterback of all time so those are going to be two exciting games coming up this weekend and we're excited to watch them now we're going to get into um discussing like i said why i believe that the saints are just a different team this year as well as some fan questions that we've got um submitted by you guys on social media but before we do that we're going to talk about patreon and patreon is the number one way to sponsor your favorite content creator We launched this thing uh, back in 2018, and we've been getting a lot of support. 
A um, few people have contributed on Patreon, and we thank you guys so much for that. Uh, what Patreon is, is think of it like a GoFundMe for your favorite content creator. So your favorite YouTuber, podcaster, uh, videographer, whatever it is. It's just a means for them to grow their brand, to gain revenue, gain attraction through that, and use that revenue towards their brand. And that's what we do at Time to Football. The uh, revenue that you contribute on Patreon, all of that is contributed to the growth of this channel. If you go to patreon.com slash time to football, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash time to football, you can read up on all the perks. Depending on how much you give every single month, we have perks for you guys. Again, patreon.com slash time to football. That's patreon.com slash time to football. We always say on the show that if everybody that was subscribed to this channel and followed us on social media gave just $1 a month, that's it, just $1 a month, we would have enough revenue to grow time to football tremendously. $1. That's one McChicken. I'm pretty sure you can afford to eat one less McChicken each month. I'm pretty sure that the Clemson football players that went over to the White House and ate that fast food wouldn't be upset if they had one less big chicken over there. Yeah. Yeah. Puts it into a different perspective, doesn't it? So $1 a month, patreon.com slash time to football. Hit us up. So now this is the part of the show where we talk about some hot topics and debates in the NFL. And I was writing this show and I was thinking about what I should talk about. And really this stems from the last two weeks. I've just been seeing a more different and more focused New Orleans Saints ball club. And it really stems back from, gosh, you you see the 10-year challenge on social media? Well, let's talk about the 10 years that the New Orleans Saints have had since 2008, 2009. Now, in 2009, they won the Super Bowl. But the years between the Super Bowl and to now, they've been 7-9, 8-8. Sometimes they go to the wild card round of the playoffs, divisional round of the playoffs, but they end up losing to uh, Marshawn Lynch and Beast Boat off that incredible run that he had in 2010 and just other instances like that. And the New Orleans Saints feel like there's been so many wasted seasons that have happened during those times when you uh, were Drew Brees and that offense all the time will throw 5,000 yards, but the defense is a letdown and Their defense really stepped it up last year, and they've been a a different team ever since then. But I feel like it stems from that, that they're just tired of losing and tired of missing out when they've had so much talent on offense. Let's go back to last year. I feel like the Saints last year, with an approved defense by drafting Marshawn Lattimore, losing the way that they did in Minneapolis with Stephon Diggs and the Minneapolis Miracle, And I think this year, he's way more focused. They've approved their team in the draft and the offseason and free agency. They got the first round by. They're their number one team in the NFC. And they know that they can't let this year slip by. An example of that was a couple weeks ago where Sean Payton brought out the Lombardi Trophy. You guys have probably heard of this. But if you haven't, let's go ahead and, and pull up a picture of it. Where Sean Payton pulled out the Lombardi Trophy... And $225,000 in cash, with $225,000, that's what each player individually wins when they win the Super Bowl. He said, if you want all this, then win three effing games. That just shows that Sean Payton is more serious, he's more aggressive, and he's more assertive and not letting this year slip by like it did last year for the New Orleans Saints. Let's talk about last week. How Drew Brees, before every single game, has a pregame chant a pregame speech. But this week's pregame speech against the Eagles was a little bit different. They're always motivating every single week. But this week's chant, this week's speech, showed a different side of Breeze. Let's go ahead and play that video. And this goes out to uh, the Saints' Instagram. So the video is credited to them. Let's go ahead and play it, and we'll get back to you guys. Hey, listen to me now. There's three stages to this game. You play, you compete, and lethal. When you're a kid, you play. You play because you love this game. You love the game of football. 
then you start learning fundamentals. You start learning technique. You start learning how to compete and how to win. Now the third stage, not everybody gets to the third stage. Not everybody gets to be lethal. But when you get a group of guys, a team like this, they love one another. They play for one another. That's lethal. Yeah. When you go in every game and know that you got a chance to win, no matter what the circumstances, you will find a way to win. Yeah. That's lethal. Yeah. So all season long, we played. We competed. And tonight, we are lethal. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. We don't take one to win. Be lethal. Those two words show how serious Breeze and the New Orleans Saints are by not letting this year slip like it did last year. Again, every team is serious in making the Super Bowl, but there's just something different about this year's team than previous years. But I want to know your thoughts for sure. So if you're watching this video on YouTube, let me know your comments um, or let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you think the Saints are a much more different and focused team or do you think they're going to go all the way even definitely want to interact with the guys and hear your thoughts now it's time for our last segment of the day fan questions you guys have submitted your questions through social media and we pick a few of them and we answer them on air so if you guys submitted your questions and we don't have a chance to answer them no worries we don't throw away your questions we save them and we will answer them another week we just picked a few of them I have not had a chance to look at any of them, so all my answers are going to be authentic. So this is going to be fun. We'll see how this goes. First question is from um, the Instagram username, I am Jojo Patton. So if you know Jojo Patton, if you're a regular degler, he makes some on-air appearances at times, and he is known to send some interesting questions. This one says, I have a lump in my spine and throat. Is it serious? So he has two lumps. One in his spine and one in his throat. You know, I think it's good to get a yearly physical. I think the one in your throat is called an Adam's apple. And if you have about 15 lumps or so, I don't know how many, but in your spine, they might be your vertebrae. But if it seems irregular, then definitely get it checked out. Um, you're 25, 26, I want to say. So you're you're young. You shouldn't be worried about your health. But it's going to go downhill from here. You're only going to get older. And it's, it's good to get a, a physical every single year. But uh, appreciate you asking me that. And I would I would uh, love to, to get updated. And uh, you're my prayers, bro. So hopefully you're all right. Next one is from another on-air uh, personality of town and football, Brandon Singh. If you know the Madden tournament, uh, great times when we watched that. He was the one that uh, uh, drank that that shake that was disgusting. Um, but he asked a question as well. This one's a little bit more serious. So thank you, Brandon. His username is Reverend B Millie O Nine. He asks. Do you think players should be able to get drafted out of high school? It's a good question. I know basketball players and high school players, or I should say basketball players and baseball players that are in high school do get drafted right out of high school. And I think that's a different level of sport. And it, it, it's, I don't want to say that it doesn't, you know, I don't want to undermine each sport because in basketball, you definitely have to show some aggression, you have to have physical strength, all that kind of sort of stuff. But having someone like LeBron James, who was drafted right out of high school, being already physically to that point where he's capable of playing with grown men. Yeah, basketball, it makes a little bit more sense. And even college players that play basketball, they don't have to wait like the college football players do. They have to wait three years before they get drafted. With football, it's about... When you're 18 years old, you're not fully grown yet as you as you would be when you're 21 or 22. Um, so I think they're really trying to protect them and just allow them to play with other 18, 19 year olds as opposed to, you know, 24, 25 year old linebackers that are at their peaks. So 
and, and there's certain examples like Trevor Lawrence. He's 6'6", 215. He's already physically at that point. There's exceptions. It's a, it's a topic of, of debate, but um, that's that. those are my thoughts on it. This next question is from another uh, on-air personality, someone that joined us on the Town of Football podcast. It's from John Castle. John actually joined us for the NFC East podcast that we had over the, the summer, and he's a big Eagles fan. Uh, he asks about the Eagles. He says, are the Eagles making a mistake by choosing Wentz over Foles? And in parentheses, he says, I believe so. I uh, appreciate the question, John. It, it could go back and forth. Uh, some fans believe that they are. Some fans believe that they aren't. I personally believe that they aren't. I believe that Carson Wentz is the future. You're going to get a lot more years out of him. And, okay, so what? what's the what's the benefit of having Foles? So he won them a Super Bowl. He had an amazing late season run. He won a playoff game. You know, it, it's he's good in the in, in in the long haul as far as the postseason. But we don't know Carson Wentz's ability in the postseason yet. We don't know how clutch he can be. So Foles, I get it. You know, he won you a Super Bowl. He'll he'll always be a Philly legend. You know, he could go out there and throw three interceptions a game. But he'll always still be loved and admired by the fans in Philadelphia. He'll always have that uh, statue in front of Lincoln Financial Field saying, you want to go for Philly, Philly. Um, He'll always be admired and appreciated for what he did. Carson Wentz, just physically, athletically, he's just a more gifted passer, I feel like. Um, And he has a lot more years on him, and we don't know what he's going to do in the postseason. So uh, we'll have to see. Um, but I believe Carson Wentz is the future, but I, I don't blame you for thinking that Foles uh, should be the quarterback. I can see either way. Next question is from the username K13 underscore Ashton. Did Phillip Rivers end on a bad note at the end of the season? Yeah, and I actually been talking about it on this podcast all year long that if the Chargers make the Super Bowl, that's going to be it for the for Philip Rivers. He's going to retire. He's going to spend time with his nine kids. He's going to go visit Decatur, Alabama, spend time with his family for a bit as well. But, you know, he did end on a bad note. He'll be back next year. And I believe that he wants to win a Super Bowl that, that year. And, you know, I'd hate for, for him to retire with that one um, because what's really preventing him from being a Hall of Fame quarterback um, is that Super Bowl. And Super Bowls are team victories but they do add on to your individual resume and um sucks for for philip to to end that way but uh hopefully he can get back and he can win uh, a super bowl one day next question from Ab- abe allen underscore three what's up that's all he says nothing much you next question from underscore Vance, underscore James, underscore Montgomery. Who's the best quarterback going into the next round? Wow. Uh, Accolades-wise, it's absolutely Tom Brady. As far as this year, just the team around him, how talented he is, how teams haven't been able to, to stop him yet, has been able to dissect defenses, Patrick Mahomes, man. Patrick Mahomes. I like Drew Brees and Tom Brady and their veteran ability to uh, just, you know, win games when it comes down to it. But Patrick Mahomes is just young. He's just athletic. He's just on a different level right now, playing out of his mind. So Patrick Mahomes is my answer. Uh, but best quarterback overall is is Tom Brady, then Drew Brees, um, followed by that. Um, last question from Riker underscore T23. Favorite football team? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Falcons. So those were your fan questions. And that brings us to the end of the show. So we thank you guys for joining us for this podcast. Make sure you guys, uh, if you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, make sure you guys go over to YouTube, subscribe to us on there. And we come out with more video podcasts. That's actually another thing that I wanted to mention. Um, Next week, since it's, 
I guess, Pro Bowl week, we're not going to come out with a podcast. Instead, if you go over to YouTube, you're going to see all these videos that we make for the Super Bowl, and we're going to make uh, a ton of hype videos as well. So it's going to be interesting stuff. Go out to uh, YouTube, subscribe to us on there. And But then the following week, uh, for Super Bowl week, we're going to come out with a podcast talking about the Super Bowl. So next week, no podcast. Go to YouTube, check out our videos, uh, youtube.com slash time to football. Vice versa, if you're on YouTube right now, go over to the podcast app. Search Time to Football on there and make sure you rate and review this podcast. And um, make sure you go over to social media and subscribe to us on there. The username is at Time to Football. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Time to Football. Follow us on there and interact with us. Appreciate you guys joining us for this podcast. And remember, blink only five times in a span of two and a half minutes. See if you can last. Boo! Take care. Thank you.